my name is Peter Miller. I'm in the Food 52 kitchen. Today, we're not gonna focus on sauteing. We're not gonna focus on chopping. We're gonna focus on dishwashing. It's a place in the meal that gets the least amount of thought. The act of cooking, of course, gets an enormous amount of detailing and a detailing from all over the world of all forms of how to cook. But at no time are you looking at someone saying how to finish the task of a meal. It helps you cook differently, and I think it helps you run your kitchen differently. Dishwashing is the drain, the space, the dish towels, that's dishwashing. How can you manage all of that and keep the water running, keep the dish water clean, strong, accurate, and you know have enough room to do all of this and then dry it quickly. Something has to be an abrasive. It can be something metal, it can be something, uh, it turns out that wool is really quite good at this because it doesn't sour. Sour is a very difficult smell to keep away from your kitchen and it's not a good smell. The natural sponge is a brilliant thing, but you really have to rinse it out. And you have to rinse it out every time because it will sour and it will never return from sour. A woman from Montana said, Ah, and rinse it out with cold water. And I realized, how brilliant. Because you rinse it with hot water, because you try to get it. You should, no, rinse it with cold water, because that will take the, the warmth out of it, which is what's causing it to sour. So I don't care which ones they are, whichever one of these you most like to look at, do that one. Because it's you, it's your, it's your kitchen. These are your pieces of equipment. This is your screwdriver, this right here. So. This is my mason jar. What is the dish you're happiest to clean? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I love my pasta pot. It's a beautiful Alessi piece with a little uh, lets off steam on the top and it has a beautiful strainer and it really makes all the difference in the world. But uh, you have to get to it, but when you're done, when you're done cleaning and everything, it really does look lovely and reminds you to go again. Your task when you come to the sink is to figure out how are you going to get the process moving, the, the system moving in such a way that it will make the cleaning of it make more sense. So the first thing you look and you say, well, what do we got here? What's on it? What do we have on the counter? Well, you know, for example, I would move these because they're not part of what I'm going to be doing. Now we're down to the dishes and the villains. We're down to the things that need to deal with the soap, need to deal with the hot water. I'm going to fill this somewhat slowly. I'm going to use the common good soap, or a wonderful soap, wonderful dish soap. I'm going to put it in here. I've got a lot of stray knives and forks here. I want to rinse them like this. They can't sit with the rest of the dishes. They need their own little dog and pony show. And then let's see if we can find, ah, here, perfect. If we had a bowl that we were cleaning that was small, we could use that, but here, we'll just use this. Throw a little soap in it and get these guys, which all, I'm rinsing them a little bit with warm water just to get the peanut butter out of them. Now the silverware has its own little planet and it can sit over here and by the time we come back to that, this will be really quite simple and we can put them away. So they're over there. I have one sharp knife in the middle of all of these things and when you, whatever you have for sharp knives, you have to alert yourself to the fact that the knife is, the point of a knife is to cut. You have to deal with it separately. Get some good hot soapy water on it, rinse this, see if this will do it. And then you can feel it. You can touch it and feel it and see if anything is stuck on it. Once that's done, take it all the way to the end. You have your dish towel, it's on your shoulder, it's on somewhere. Take this and get it all the way out of your situation. So now I've got this little soapy water. I'm going to let the water run a little bit because these dishes all need to soak a little bit. I want to make sure that the drain is always clear and clean, that it's not clogged up. This one's really dry. This is oatmeal. 
Okay, and this, suddenly you've changed types. You're on, you're on clear glass, you're on breakable glass versus your coffee cup. You have to make an adjustment for this. I would do this now. I can get to it. I have a little place I can put it to dry. Let's get this one out of our way so I don't have to worry about it later. And put it here. I've put this over here. I can dry this in 20 seconds. Just let it drip for a second and then you'll be fine. Now we have the little blade, which has been soaking for, you know, a minute. It's ready to go. You don't want to waste water. You don't want to waste soap. I have a really good soap here now. Let's get some of these knocked off. Like this. In we go. That one's still going to need 10 minutes worth of soaking. Assuming that I need this, like it was a salad bowl or something else, then I'm gonna get this out of here. And I'm gonna put this in here because if I let it sit in there for 20 seconds, I can dry it as soon as I come back to it. So now I gotta go back to another bowl. Start with this, fill it slowly, get it started. Now let's figure out what we're gonna do. We've got a coffee pot. You've gotta get this off it, but if you put this in my soapy water, you're gonna ruin my soapy water and I'm gonna to have to go back to zero. So first, let's rinse it. You'll discover that you've gotta get this thing undone because the coffee grounds will all be inside it and you've gotta rinse those. Then you can go in my soapy water. They're done. The difficulty of these is that you have to get the outside of these. You have to get the fingerprints, you have to get the you have to make this look brand new. There. There's an enormous amount of deceit about dish towels. <laughs> Ask anyone and they'll, they know when they owned a towel that didn't absorb because it was sold just for the appearance of it. But a family will have a sort of subtle legacy of dish towels. They will have the dish towel that's from their wedding. They will have the dish towel that is the parallel to a linen shirt that they only use for a particular occasion. They will have a dish towel that you use like a pair of dungarees and it's just meant to go out there and fight through cast iron pans and fight through hot cooking and fight through saute and fight through pulling things out of the oven. And I think you're obliged to have all those different sorts. I, you know, I love giving somebody a beautiful dish towel. I love giving somebody a utilitarian dish towel. They're both wonderful. The beautiful dish towel really is literally the scarf of your kitchen. You have this thing there. It's quite beautiful. I'm always amused that just a minute of a pan like this upside down, it dries in a second and now it's ready and you can actually clean the outside and you're done. This is a lot of room on a counter if you don't take care of it. So we'll get rid of that. Um, this is ready to go. Get the fingerprints off. Lots of countries have it, but we got this one from, from Sweden, a, um, a dish cloth versus a dish towel, which allows you to reach in. It's particularly good for this kind of thing where you reach in because it, I'll show you. It allows you to get into the corner of a glass like this without endangering your fingers or anything else that the glass might break. It's very soft, lovely. If you're done, if you've finished everything, then you can use that soap bowl for the one last bit of cleanup. The best outcome is, is if doing the dishes, if you have some affection toward it, if you bring it some honor, and if it does not show up in your mind as something that you dread. I, I think there's lots of information in it. I think there's lots of importance to it. I think there's lots of advantages to it, and I think you cook better. If you have a chance, take a look at the book, How to Wash the Dishes. I think it 
will give you a sense of some of the difficulties and some of the solutions and some of the understandings that will allow you uh, an advantage when you're washing the dishes. And that's what you want. You want things more on your side and less on the dishes side. So take a look, uh, I think it will help. If you like this video, if this has been fun, if this has been some help, like it and subscribe and we'll get some more done for you. Of course not. Come on, I'll give you a hand.